You're watching Hall News right here on your TV. It's Thursday, May 14th, and I'm Jessica Kading. The total number of confirmed and probable cases of COVID-19 in the Halton region has now reached 600. Eight more people were confirmed positive since yesterday. Four of those people are residents of Burlington, three are from Milton, and one in Halton Hills. There is unfortunately another COVID-19 related death to report since yesterday after a Halton Hills resident passed away. Seven more people have made full recoveries, which leaves us with 114 active cases that we're aware of in the Halton region. There's also a new institutional outbreak to report. At least two residents in the Hampton Terrace Care Centre in Burlington have now confirmed positive for the virus. Still, the overall numbers and trends in Ontario are said to look promising, and the province has announced that they will be moving into stage one of their economic recovery plan by Tuesday. Oakville MPP Stephen Crawford comments. So the Premier Ford and a number of cabinet ministers made an announcement in terms of phase one of reopening the economy. So there was a number of uh, areas that we are able to open up. So for example, uh, starting Saturday at midnight, golf courses will be able to be open. Now the restaurants will not be open as usual within the golf courses. They'll be only available for takeout as an example. So uh, that's just one example of the social distancing uh, factors that still have to be uh, factored in when, when opening up, but uh, nevertheless, at least golf courses will be able to open. And there's also a number of businesses that will be able to open next week as well. Uh, as well as full construction in the province will be able to begin uh, next Tuesday, again, with social distancing measures in place. Now, this all does depend upon the COVID number, COVID-19 numbers continuing to go down. Is that correct? That's correct. So that's, that's uh, every phase of our reopening is going to depend on the COVID numbers and infections going down. The good news is today was another low day. They've been trending down, so that's very positive. But yes, it'll be as will all the phases of reopening be dependent on the numbers going down. Now, I also understand that you spoke in the legislature on Tuesday. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I had the pleasure of going to the legislature. Actually, we had a limited sitting on Tuesday of this week where we extended the state of emergency until June 2nd. I also had an opportunity to talk briefly and, and, and give some examples of some Oakville residents and uh, businesses that are doing a great job through this pandemic and are helping out our local community, whether it's Returnal Restaurant that's been uh, preparing meals for the Kerr Street Mission or Film.ca, which has had supplies and, and donations as well uh, of PPE or individuals that have been helping out. You know, the community has really come together. So I wanted to highlight some of those individuals and organizations that are really stepping up for Oakville. Well, thank you so much and thank you for your time here today. Part of the reopening announcement included confirmation that private campgrounds and parks can open in order to prepare for the summer season. Seasonable homes that have access to both electric and water services will be permitted, as well as rental camping services for trailers and RVs that hook up to electric and water services as long as they're rented for the full season. The town of Milton is hoping to be in lockstep with the province when it comes to recovery phase. We spoke with Mayor Kranz this afternoon. He says he hopes things will open up soon. Let's take a look. I'm only hoping now that we will be able to follow the provincial guidelines reasonably close. As an example, I know uh, garden centers, uh, hardware stores have been allowed to open up golf courses. And of course, I know golf courses are, they're critical in uh, the recovery. So we're working with them. And again, all those social distances that have to be uh, kept away. As I referred to it, the clubhouses and the socializing and that, will probably not uh, happen even in as much as a lot of the uh, golf courses would like to see that happen, but we know the province wouldn't allow that at this moment. So, so much is in flux right now and it's all brand new for a lot of us. Uh, I would sooner than later like to see the businesses start to open up, but not at the risk of uh, the health and well-being of uh, people in general. Meanwhile, as seniors continue to be in the most vulnerable category for COVID-19, we asked Milton's mayor, who's just over 80 years old, how he's been coping. And I know people of my age are in that risk category, but uh, I, I don't really think personally too much about that. I've always, as an example, you know, we hear a lot about washing our hands. I always did. So there's not a lot that's changed. I've probably washed my hands maybe a little bit more now because of the emphasis on that, but I'm well aware caution is really what it's all about. Uh, and I've been very cautious of, you know, 
interacting with people and keeping that distance. That's really is the secret to success. And again, we are social animals. And I miss the public, I honestly do. But uh, through the modern technology that you and I are using right now, we can still stay connected. And anybody of my era that's really not totally familiar with that, I would suggest you get more familiar with because that's certainly one way to keep socializing with uh, society in general. The City of Burlington has now announced that those who have reserved a community garden plot for 2020 are now allowed to access those plots to grow their own food. A set of COVID-19 safety instructions have been prepared, including recommendations from Holton's Medical Officer of Health that permit each gardener needs to comply to participate. Throughout the season, there will be restrictions on when gardeners can visit to limit the number of people in the garden at any one time, who is allowed entry, and sanitation requirements that everyone must be responsible for so that everyone can enjoy the garden in the safest way possible. Even though we're almost into phase one of the recovery plan, we are seeing more businesses open up and we're still asked to do our part to maintain social distancing and personal protective equipment is also still needed on a large scale. I spoke with Oakville MP Anita Anand, who's the Minister of Public Services and Procurement, about how those procurement efforts are going. Procurement is continuing to occur at a very, very fast and incredibly intense pace. The virus is continuing to be an issue across the country. And even though parts of our country are opening up in terms of their economies, the need for personal protective equipment continues. So the federal government is procuring PPE from international and domestic supply chains at very aggressive rates. And we are attempting to fulfill orders from the provinces and territories and also be ready for any future needs that may arise if there is another outbreak in the future. Now, you mentioned how different provinces and territories are opening up in, at different paces. Have you been in contact with them about their reopening plans? Most definitely. Every couple of weeks, I meet with my procurement counterparts in each of the provinces and territories, and we discuss the plans for reopening in various regions. And the federal government is here to support the provinces and territories in those efforts, making sure that we are, of course, taking a methodical approach and following public health advice. And how have you been finding virtual parliament? Virtual Parliament is quite a surprise. As you know, I was elected in October. And so since October, it's been quite a roller coaster ride in terms of becoming a member of Parliament, becoming a minister, sitting in the House of Commons in re real life, and now participating by a virtual Zoom call, uh, House of Commons sittings. And I will say that it's very exciting. And it's quite interesting to see the ways in which parliamentarians come together to ensure that the business of government occurs. Now, with so much more happening online, how much time are you in Oakville versus Ottawa these days? It's a great question. I am in Ottawa at least two to three days a week with my fellow cabinet ministers and parliamentarians to participate in question period on Wednesday, for example, or to participate in cabinet meetings as well. And then the remainder of the time, of course, I'm here in the riding and doing my work from home because that is what we are supposed to be doing, of course, making sure that we are staying at home as much as possible. And for when we are heading out, I know we were talking about uh, personal protective equipment. I notice at some grocery stores now they are handing out masks when you walk in. Is that the new recommendation to wear masks when we are going outside of our homes? The recommendation, of course, from the public health authorities is to maintain physical distancing of two meters apart. But when that is not possible, personal protective equipment such as masks are recommended by many uh, provincial governments as well as our public health authorities. Um, but we have to remember that the advice is still to stay at home as much as possible, which is why it's so wonderful to talk to you from my home study here. Yes, thank you so much for connecting with us. And we've certainly been able to make more use of these technologies ourselves as well. Um, we really appreciate you calling in to us today and we'll talk to you again next week.
Definitely. And I just wanted to thank you and everything you're doing to bring information to the viewers here in Halton. It's really important to make sure that the federal government's response efforts are broadly known and you're playing an important role in that part. So thank you so much. We Love Oakville is a collective of residents associations throughout Oakville who come together in times of crisis to help the town. To help support the local efforts and needs during the COVID-19 emergency, We Love Oakville has decided to collaborate with the Oakville Community Foundation and they're encouraging residents to donate to the Oakville Resiliency Fund. The Resiliency Fund has granted over $500,000 to frontline charities in Oakville since early April. If you are able to donate, you are assured that 100% of your funds will go towards the charity and you will get a tax receipt if you donate $20 or more. For more information, visit the website on your screen. In his daily briefing earlier today, one of the things our Prime Minister insisted is that we buy Canadian whenever we can in a push to support the economy. We reached out to Milton MP Adam Vancouverton to expand on this, and he says we really should take the time to consider what we're buying and where it's from. We can support our local growers, we can support our local producers, we can support local companies by, you know, doing a little bit of shopping online. Yesterday uh, was, was Wednesday and it was takeout day, so I ordered breakfast and lunch. Uh, from a, a local restaurant, uh, the Thai House on Milton is where I, in Milton, which is just across from my office, is where I got my lunch from. And something that you can do to just help them out a little bit more is if you're not getting delivery, if you're planning on picking up, then don't use an app. Just give them a call. You know, Google their phone number, call them directly, and then all of the money that uh, you're spending on your lunch or your breakfast or your dinner is going directly to the uh, the local people that are employed there and the business that you know is probably struggling struggling to pay their rent right now. Uh, but it doesn't just it doesn't just mean restaurants. You know. If, uh, if you're able to shop locally uh, on the internet, if you can call a, a local store, think about where your items are coming from, uh, where your, your products are coming from. And that includes items at the grocery store. You know, shop, uh, shop locally at the grocery store as well. Like look for things that are made in Canada, support Canadian growers throughout this time. Uh, because like every single family, senior and student, our local businesses need support as well. And like the rest of Canada, restaurants across Halton are one of the major sectors continuing to struggle the longer they stay closed for in-dining business. Vancouverton says their biggest expense, besides food and labour, is rent. Uh, we've got something called OKECRA, or KECRA, that's the Program for Commercial Rent Assistance. And the federal and the provincial government basically want to split your rent for three months, okay? So for the months, this is if you're a restaurant, not if you're, this isn't for residential rent, that's a provincial thing. Uh, but for federal rent, or sorry, for commercial rent, the federal government and the provincial government have come together to create a program called KECRA, uh, which is the Commercial Emergency Commercial Rent uh, Canadian Emergency Commercial Rent Assistance Program. And uh, MPP Parm Gill and I have co-written a letter to the landlords and to the tenants here in Milton um, who are trying to access this program. We think it's a really good program. The governments want to split your rent for the months of, uh, of April, May, and June to get us through this. It's, it's the best way to access government funding for rent and um, the landlords need to apply. So we're encouraging as many local businesses to ask their landlords if they've applied for this. And if you need uh, some clarity on that, you need your questions answered, or if you'd like a copy of the letter that we've written, then please be in touch with my office or MPP Parm Gill's office. The Burlington Fire Department is discouraging family firework displays this Victoria Day weekend due to the potential fire hazards and concerns around social gatherings. That being said, if you do plan to set fireworks off, you need to do so safely. If you have any questions, you can contact the fire department at burlington.ca. Alternatively, the city encourages you to enjoy virtual fireworks this year using an augmented reality experience you can find by visiting snapped.com slash Victoria Day. Thanks for being with us here on Halton News. We do need to take a short break, but we'll be right back with Burlington MP Karina Gould after this. Welcome back to Halton News. A couple of days ago, Burlington MP Karina Gould, who is also Canada's Minister of International Development, co-hosted the launch of the Group of Friends of Solidari Solidarity for Global Health Security virtual meeting alongside her counterparts from Denmark, Qatar, the Republic of Korea and Sierra Leone. It was during that meeting that she announced new support to Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance and the Global Polio Eradication Initiative. For more, I'll turn it over to you, MP Gould. 
Absolutely. So Gavi is the Global Vaccine Alliance, and they vaccinate uh, 80 to 90 million children every year against common uh, infectious diseases such as measles or smallpox or any of the, you know, routine vaccinations that we get here in Canada. And Gabby is playing a really important role on the front lines against COVID-19 in the developing world. They operate in over 60 countries and their networks have really pivoted to provide public health information, but also frontline treatment for many vulnerable people uh, in the COVID context. And on Tuesday, I was really proud to announce Canada's contribution to this year's Gabby replenishment of $600 million over the next five years, which will make sure that we can continue to vaccinate uh, those 80 million children every single year to prevent disease outbreaks um, of other common diseases around the world, to make sure that you know those kids um, are getting through early childhood and that they can develop and grow into uh, productive and flourishing adults all around the world. That's wonderful. And there was also some big news about additional supports coming for businesses. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so yesterday, my colleague, Minister Jolie, the Minister responsible for economic development, announced $962 million for businesses who perhaps have fallen through the cracks of some of the other supports that we've provided. This includes over $250 million for FedDev, which is the agency that provides support to businesses in Southern Ontario. And this is particularly directed at, for example, the tourism, the hospitality sectors, seasonal sectors um, that you know are, are experiencing particular difficulties um, and will likely have challenges for for the summer season coming up and so this is really good news additional supports here uh, in southern Ontario to make sure that those more seasonal industries um, those that are reliant on tourism and on hospitality can get additional supports as well thank you and of course there was also the additional supports announced for both seniors and students I believe the student portal will open up tomorrow that's right, Jessica. So uh, I know students um, and those who've recently graduated have been eagerly awaiting uh, their ability to apply for the Canada Emergency Student Benefit. Uh, and this portal will open tomorrow on Friday, uh, May 16th, uh, May 15th, and uh, they will be able to apply for their benefits and it will be retroactive back to May 1st. So uh, definitely encourage students to apply. Uh, they can do so starting tomorrow. It will be managed uh, through the CRA. It's rainy out there tonight and you should not expect much better tomorrow. We're also looking at cloudy skies and rain showers. But Saturday will start off our Victoria Day long weekend without a cloud in the sky. Full sunshine for you to enjoy at 20 degrees. That is before those clouds roll right back in and bring rain with it both Sunday and Monday. Tuesday is the next time we expect to see that sunshine make another appearance. The Milton Chamber of Commerce invites you to join them tonight for their virtual community awards. The annual community awards gala had to be postponed until September due to COVID-19, but they still want to find a way to share the good news. Tonight on YouTube, they will announce their small, medium and large businesses of the year. The S&P and TSX are down while the Dow Jones is up. Here's today's mixed market report. We do need to take another short break now. We'll be right back with the Burlington Food Bank after this. Welcome back to Halton News right here on your TV. 
You may recall earlier this week we reported on the Burlington Dad's Bottle Drive. Our cameras were there last weekend as they prepared to make their returns and turn bottles into cash for Halton Women's Place and the Burlington Food Bank. Tonight we have the Burlington Food Bank receiving that much appreciated check. Hi, this is Robin Bailey, the Executive Director of the Burlington Food Bank, and we just want to thank the Burlington Dads for all that you've done for Halton Women's Place and uh, ourselves here at the Food Bank over the years, and especially with the bottle drive, uh, just an incredible total. Um, just thanks so much, Tobin, and all of the crew that helped out with it. Yeah, it was quite successful. We, uh, it was a lot bigger than we thought it was going to be, and uh, on top of that, we managed to raise the 387 pounds of food as well, so we're happy we could donate this to you. Thanks again. The Halton District School Board will be hosting tonight a virtual celebration of student excellence at 7 p.m. on their website, hdsb.ca. Families in the broader community are invited to watch the ceremony, which will be running as a live stream and celebrate award recipients. The recording of this event will remain online for families to view afterwards. The United Way of Halton and Hamilton invites you to participate to show your love Local Love Day virtually. The idea is to help give back to local agencies during COVID-19. For example, you could make a thank you card for frontline workers or record yourself reading a story aloud for online kids programming. There are all different kinds of activities to choose from and it's all happening on May 27th. Visit the United Way online for more details and to sign up. The Eden Mills Writers Festival is presenting their In Your Own Backyard series online starting June 11th at 8 p.m. You can join host Karma Brown, journalist and best-selling author of The Recipe for a Perfect Wife, as she leads the discussion with the authors of three popular books. The event will include closed captioning. To visit and register, please go to EdenMillsWritersFestival.ca and click the 2020 online series. All the featured books are available at the festival's book selling partner, The Bookshelf in Guelph. You can order yours at bookshelf.ca. DC Greenhouses in Halton Hills invites you to visit their website, place an order, and they'll have your order ready for pickup. They've moved to this online ordering system in order to keep both employees and customers safe. Also, due to COVID-19, all sales will be final. They are open seven days a week from 9 to 5. You can see all they have to offer at shops.dggreenhouses.com. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Halton News tonight. There's more to be found at yourtv.tv. You can also follow us on social media at yourtvhalton. For Halton News, I'm Jessica Kading and I thank you for watching.